Okay, so this is a unit about rational functions. We've been graphing for a while now. I asked kids to tell me what this was, and most kids knew that this was left four and down seven. Raise your hand if you can confirm that was you. Okay, good. Then if you actually had to give the asymptotes, there's an X asymptote and there's a Y asymptote. The X one, is that the vertical or is that the horizontal? Zertical is the way I helped you remember that. The X one is not four. It's a really common mistake. What is it actually? No, it's not X equals four. It's negative. negative four. You remember how you do the opposite of what's in there? Because if you put in a negative four there, watch what happens. I put in a negative four, I get zero on the bottom. You can't divide by zero. That's why x equals negative four is the vertical. You guys know which way vertical is? Do it with your hands. What's vertical? It's up and down like this. Okay, so then this one must be the y, and it is just like it seems. y equals negative seven. No flipping it around or anything, because you trust the stuff on the outside. You don't trust the stuff on the inside. So that was a negative four vertical asymptote. Now would you please graph this thing? By now you should know where x equals lines are their vertical, vertical lines at negative four, and y equals negative seven. And then you should be able to know where you can find a couple dots from the x and y chart. And I know a lot of kids have trouble with this, but if you can just try different numbers here, like for example, you could try sticking in a one and go, well, that didn't work nice because if I put in a one, I get one fifth. I don't want to deal with fractions. So keep playing with it until you get a nice whole number. Like negative five works pretty good. I'll give you that one. So put in negative five, see what you get for a total. So you're going to put in your dotted lines. I am on purpose not doing it right. You know, kind of like that. That is not correct. Put in your dotted lines, your asymptote lines, and then find a couple points and then draw the line getting closer and closer to the asymptotes. This is the hardest part. We're doing it first. And from here, we can do a lot of easy stuff like adding fractions, subtracting fractions, factoring. All right, all that stuff's on the test, but let's finish this one off. Graph it. Pausing for a second. Okay, so did you know that a vertical line is up and down and that has to go through the number negative four? So it would go like that. Who can match up with that one? Does that make sense to you? That's what a vertical line looks like and it's at negative four. Now, how about the other one, negative seven? For a Y line, those are the horizontal, as in like the horizon. So that's a dotted line going across at negative seven. This is where negative seven lives. Dotted line through there. Okay, then I can tell you that nine times out of 10, not 10 out of 10, but nine times out of 10, the points are gonna be right there and right there. That kind of gives you a hint on where you should pick, just on either side of the vertical. Look at that, just on either side of that. So you should pick negative five, and negative three. Those are the ones that are on either side of the vertical. And if you wanna just throw in negative four, it's not a bad idea, because when you put it in here, you'll go, oh, I'm dividing by zero, that makes the asymptote. And then you wanna go on either side of that. When you put in negative five, here's how that worked out. When you put in negative five here, you had negative one on the bottom, one divided by negative one is negative one, Negative one minus the seven makes negative eight. So this gave you a negative eight. And negative three, when you put it in there, would make positive one. If I put in a negative three here, I get positive one on the bottom. One divided by one is one. One minus seven is negative six. So there's my two key points. Negative five, negative eight. That's this one. And negative three, negative six, that's that one. Okay, now, last thing, asymptotic behavior. That's where this line gets closer and closer and never touches. 
All right, I have been pounding on this graphing stuff enough that I hope you could have all, thank you very much, gotten that one right. But I also get, it's the hardest question on the test. But now we should go back and focus on what the easy questions on the test are like. Okay, because if you can't do this, you could still get a B on your test. You're not going to get an A unless you can do graphing. But you could even just get one graphing question right, and you could pull off an A on this test if you can just get one graph right. There's going to be multiple graphs. I'm just saying if you're kind of weak at graphing, but maybe you could pull it off. But what if you can't pull off graphing? Well, then there are other questions on the test. Let's practice some of those. You ready? Uh 2x over 5 plus 1 over 7. Why can't I add these right now? Yes? Because they don't have a common denominator. Very good. Alex, can you shut that door over there, please? Everybody, if you haven't already, copy this problem down. And then what do we have to multiply by to get it a common denominator, Noah? Okay, so on... On this side where I'm putting the dots, what do you want me to put there? I do not need to multiply by 2x because I that would give it a common numerator. I want the bottom to be the same. Rena, what could I multiply by where those dots are? Um, the, the other denominator. Good, so 5. And now look, I'm shaping up to have a 35 denominator. Dashiell, what would make the other side have a 35 denominator? So I put a 7 and a 7. Everybody finish that off now and multiply it all out. And when you got a common denominator, you just have to add across the top and you'll be done. Go ahead and try it. Your final answer looks something like 15x minus 4 over 35. Okay, I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm saying it'll look something like that. Again, I said this is not the answer, but it looks sort of like that. Okay, get the answer. And compare with the kid next to you. Okay, let's see how you would have done. 14x plus 5 on the top. Raise your hand if you had it right. I need to have feedback. Good, thank you. So it looks like you're getting this. That one was pretty easy. It was called having a common denominator. All right, so... Here's a more complicated one. You ready? Remember how these factor? Do you remember how to do divide by a fraction? Do you remember how that changes to multiply, but then you got to do something special? Question. Abby T. Are oh, you going to give an answer? Yeah. Cool. Just gonna answer? Okay, good. So first up, if you can factor it, you should. You remember how I even have it on a sign on the wall here? If you can factor it, you should. I see something that factors. If you don't see it, then you are going to get this problem wrong. You've got to factor that so that you can then cancel something. Please talk to the kid next to you about what part can factor. Pausing while you... Just communicate with them about what part factors. Okay, I had some people giving theories and, and some of them were right, some of them were wrong. This part right here is the part that factors. Do you remember that that's x plus four and, oh no, no, not, not four, x plus two and x minus two, does that ring a bell? So if I erase this and I put in x plus two and x minus two, you'll quickly see that there's gonna be something that'll cancel. You gotta know how to factor, guys. We had a whole test on it back in first semester. It's so critical. All right, do you see something that cancels then? Dash, what cancels? That's gone, yay. Now it's just this. Davis, do you know what to do with divide by one half? So you change it to x minus two times 2 over 1. It isn't 2 over 1 the same exact thing as 2? Yeah. So it's pretty much just 2 times that. Now, I would be good with you leaving it this way. You know why? Because this is called factored. And now some kids are going to feel obligated to multiply it out. I'll take it. 
but do you get that that's factored? And if you can factor it, you should. So I'd be good with that answer. Or that answer, either way, is okay. Be honest, without any help, how many of you would have got that one? That's about half. All right, so let's do one more that's similar. Ready? 4x over x squared minus 81 divided by x plus 9 and an x on top. Now, one of the most common mistakes people make is they think you can cancel this x here with this x here, and you can't. Now, why you can't cancel that? Because that bottom one is part of a plus. You can't cancel when they're like that. I want to show you why if you were thinking that would have canceled. What if I had said 5 over 5 plus 9? Well, you guys know that's 5 over 14, right? Is that the same thing as if I just cancel those? No, you can't cancel that. You can't cancel when it's part of an add or subtract. So you cannot cancel those two x's. But there is something you can cancel eventually because this is a divide problem. And there's some factoring you have to do. So first, if I were you, I'd rewrite it as a times problem because divide, nobody does them as divide. Seriously, no math teacher would do this as divide. We would change it to times. So go ahead and change the problem into a times, and then if you can factor it, you should, and there's something there waiting to be factored. I'll pause for a second. Let me give that a try. So first step, personally, I'd change that divide into a times problem, and so I'd go, this part stays the same, 4x over, wait a minute though, I could factor that. You know, this part here, it factors into x plus 9 and x minus 9. And do you ever see that somewhere? Yes, I did over there. So I'm changing this into times, and I'm flipping this one over. So the x that was on the top alone becomes an x on the bottom alone. And then the x plus 9 on the top can cancel with the other x plus 9. Look at that. Is there anything else that can cancel? Hint. There is. Abby, do you see what cancels? I do not. Okay, let's focus in on what is on the top even. What's even left? Four. Yep. And on the bottom, you see this X? And you might think that you couldn't cancel those, but this is part of a times problem. That 4X is part of a times problem, so you can cancel that and that. And whenever you cancel something, technically you're leaving behind ones. And that's important, but... In this case, we're just timesing everything by one, which doesn't really do much. Question before I move on. Can you factor the x minus nine? Nope, because x minus nine, yep, it's not x squared minus nine. If it would have been x squared minus nine, we could have definitely factored it. So then I look back and what's on the top? Four. What's on the bottom? X minus nine. There's your answer. That's the final answer. Who had 4 over x minus 9? Not too many people. All right, we should try another one like that. I'm not saying this is super easy. This is an R3 level question, but I think it's easier than the graphing ones. But we'll see if you agree. Here's the next one where we're multiplying a couple things. 4 parentheses x minus 3 over 2x divided by x squared minus 9 over 5x. I'm going to pause for a sec. I'm going to give that one a try. All right, so here's how you'd start. First off, you would factor this part, because if you can factor it, you should. And that part can be factored. So we make it into x plus 3 and x minus 3. There, that's factored. Now, is there anything I can cancel just right away? I'm not seeing anything yet. So next, I'm gonna go in this divide, I gotta change it to a times. So I'm gonna change it to a times, and then the 5x is gonna go on the top, and the bottom is gonna be the x plus three and x minus three thing. And then this, I'm just gonna copy straight down. Four parentheses x minus three over two x. Now can you see something that cancels? Oh, yes. 
I hope your eyes jump to this and this and this and that. One on the top, one on the bottom. So now this x cancels this x. This x minus 3 cancels this x minus 3. So now what's left is just to multiply them. 4 times 5, 20, over 2 times x plus 3. Can I leave it factored? Sure. If you can factor it, you should. If you multiplied it out, would I multiply mark it wrong? No, you could totally write 2x plus 6 if you wanted to. Oh my gosh, I just realized something though. I just realized something. This 20 can factor into a 2 times 10, and then the 2s are supposed to cancel. Boom. 10 over x plus 3. I bet a lot of people missed that one. Remember the can factor it you should thing? It even applies to whole numbers like 20 because I changed it into a 2 times 10, and it allowed me to cancel the 2s. So that, if you can factor it you should thing, comes in really handy. This would have actually been wrong. It didn't get reduced all the way. Maybe I could have given you half credit on the test, but... Okay. You'd still have some time to practice, but tonight is really, really huge for this, this coming test. I'm going to give you an escape hatch where, like, like, if you aren't ready, you have one last thing you could do because I'm going to have a review session tonight at 6.30. Not at school, but at home on a Google Meet. So I am opening that right now. And it's in the Schoology page is the directions on how to get there. Do you have to go? No. If you're doing tonight's practice and you're feeling good and you're just ready to take it without any help, totally cool. But if you aren't, you can come to my Google Meet tonight at 6.30 at night. All right, I am opening it up. I'm calling it Thursday Night Live. So this is a folder that is now right underneath Wednesday. It's a green folder. You guys see the green folder in my Schoology page? If you want to do one last few practice problems where you can be like, Mr. Server, I'm stuck on this one. We can, if it's, there might only be two kids that show up. I don't know. Or there could be a whole bunch of people, in which case I'll do some practice problems with the group and then I'll stay around after everybody else leaves and I can answer one-on-one -on -one questions. So that's tonight, 6.30. Just thought I would offer a new way of getting some help for anybody who's getting, like, nervous that this test might not go so good. So here's one last reason to show up at that. Do you get that showing up at that might be enough to get you a good grade on this test and therefore no retake? Because a retake takes two hours of your life, including getting up in the morning at least once and having to be driven into school. Two hours of your life plus a morning visit. That's a pain in the butt. So if you can avoid that by doing some extra study tonight, cool. Come to Thursday Night Live, 6.30 tonight. All right. So back to if you're just doing, here's the simplest. Add 5x plus 3 over 6x plus 3. Plus 6x plus 4 over x plus 1. Do you need a common denominator on this kind? Well, it's kind of a trick question. You have a common denominator. Whether you need it or not, you have a common denominator. So, do you need common denominators to add things? Yes, you do. And we've already got it. So... It's super easy. You just add across the top and across the bottom. See the headphone? Take it out. Okay. Aben, 6x and 5x. And 4 and the 3. What do you get? If you combine them? Yep. Uh, 30x. You're multiplying. This is add. This is just add. Okay, 11x. 11x. Yep. And on the bottom, do we add them or do we just keep it the same? Yes. Keep it the same. There's your answer. 
I think you guys understood that. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. That's almost everybody. All right, what if we need a common denominator? Then it'd be like this. 5 over 2 plus 3x over x plus 1. Does it have a common denominator? No. Does it need a common denominator? Yes, because we're adding. Remember on the multiply kind? That's the nice part about multiply. No common denominator needed. All right. Everybody put a parenthesis like this and like this because you're going to multiply by something to get them a common denominator. Vivian, what am I multiplying with these two dots are? What do I put there? Two. Yep. Nora, the other one, here and here. Uh, yep. Now do you get that that is the same as that? We have the common denominator. This will be a little bit of a pain, but not that much. 5x plus 5 plus, those have to be multiplied. And then you put it all together. And on the bottom, there will be a debate. Some kids will have this. And some kids will have multiplied it out. And they'll both get credit. I personally like it factored. Because it helps you find stuff that cancels. Everybody figure out what you think is on top. Compare it with the kid next to you and see if you get the same thing. I'll pause. Let me try that. Vivian, you talk to this person? Talk to him. Ina, be shy. Don't be shy. Okay, David, how many X's did you have on the top? Okay, how about this? What's five times X? What's three X times two X? What's six X plus the five X? 11 X. There's 11 X's on the top. Aben, the five times the one made five. There's no other number. So what do you think the final answer is? Who had it right? Raise your hand if you did. Cool. All right, I think you're ready. This is a last chance practice test. Oh, wait, wait, there's one more kind. This comes up all the time. Some kid gets to the end. And they leave this as their answer. And I'm like, oh, you were so close, but you didn't finish it. Why can't this be the answer? Because you can factor out and cancel something. Try to figure out what factors and then what cancels and compare with the kid next to you. That'll be the most common mistake on the test is kids, won't, they'll give you an answer and they won't have factored. Hint. Pausing while you give that a try. Okay, let's see how you did. Did you notice that the two factored out and you have X minus two? How do you get that, Mr. Server? Because if I divide both of these by that two, this gives me this, and this part is right there. Okay. And then this 12 is really two times six. That's also factoring. It's taking a 12 and turning it into 2 times 6. The 2 is canceled. There's your answer. X minus 2 over 6. Okay. So here is your practice test. Of course, this isn't the real test, but it's a lot like it. I will release the key. That way, your job tonight is take it home, act like it's a test. But really, really, really take a minute and check it against the key. Because, like, if you get five wrong, you have time to still fix it, you know? Like, figure out what you're doing wrong. It was not cheating to look at the key. It's actually just stupid to not look at the key because you, then you don't know if you're doing them right or not. Okay, so take this, take it. Uh, half class will probably finish before we even, well, maybe you won't finish, but you'll be close. 
But the key will be going home, finishing it, and checking it against the key. All right? And remember, if you want extra help tonight, 6.30, rare. Almost never do this. But I'm opening up a help room. The code is David Server. You go to Google Meets. And if you don't know how to do that, you just go into uh, sign into a single sign-on. Once you open your Google Drive, you can just go to meet.google.com. And it, it says right in the little green folder that says Thursday Night Live. All right, that's all I got for the video for today.